almost everyone has a different theory about this phenomenon. It's become known as the Dunedin Sound. Some say it's the city's isolation, others it's Celtic heritage. But the funny thing is when you come down here and talk to people in Dunedin, they don't even say that it actually exists. It's not really relevant, I don't think. Uh, it was a time when four or five bands were together at one stage five or six years ago, and that was, I suppose, the Dunedin Sound. And since then, I think they've they themselves, who are now, a lot of them still in bands, I don't think they could be classed as the Dunedin sound. It could have something to do with just a lot of bands coming from Dunedin, you know, like a lot of the Flying Nun stable. There's, uh, there's a lot more to Dunedin than uh, just the Flying Nun band. At one stage, you know, maybe there was a bit of a Dunedin sound, but it, it's grown, you know, it's changed. Well, I think the Dunedin sound is pretty much an ingrained myth now. It's not going to go away. These people in the North Island have a certain perception of music in the south, particularly in Dunedin, and I don't think anything's going to shake it because they will see only what they want to see and hear what they want to hear. But um, I think if anyone came down to Dunedin and spent a little bit of time here, they would find out there's a lot more going on and always has been. I just know that the people that sort of play it and that I play with have got a similar sort of outlook on music and life, and that probably comes through in the music in terms of um, not worrying about any other aspect apart from the music. all the good things of a good band. Strong songs. Snapper could be the, be the next big band that comes out of Dunedin. Snapper I don't think is um, indicative of a Dunedin sound. I think it's something new that's that's been created, that's come from a combination of Peter's music over seven years and a combination of the four of us together, each adding their own special touch to, to the music and coupling it up with distortion, which gives it another three-dimensional effect. The enemy was really the starting point. Like, they just sort of proved that, you know, you, you could just get a guitar and learn three chords and start playing if you had the sort of attitude. You know, they, sort of, they, were the, they were the sort of pioneers of that. And then the clean was the next. And after that, you know, just lots of people started doing it. Now it's to the point where there's almost a guitar under everybody's bed. All four members of Snapper have all played in various Dunedin bands before. I get the feeling that Dunedin is quite an incestuous place. It has been in the past, but like there's been a sort of an influx in the last sort of year and a half of people from Auckland, like um, Dominic, he comes from Auckland, you know, sort of, he's a natural choice. Instead of after living in Dunedin all my life, you know, sort of run out of uh, people who were wanting to go into a different direction. Yes, I guess it is, but um, hopefully in more good ways than bad. A lot of people still play with other people in bands, like there'll be some bands and a lot of those people will be playing with others. There's only so many people to go around, so... <laughs> you know, it's sort of a bit like a balloon, really. You squeeze it one way and it comes out somewhere else. Well, a band gets an audience basically through word of mouth. There's not a lot of people involved and they all seem to know each other, really. It's, uh, it's the sort of audience that Martin Phillips of the Chills refers to as a sort of his conscience, the people he's ultimately responsible to. so-called Dunedin or Flying Nun sound has been the backbone of New Zealand music for most of this decade. But rather than being a specific sound, it's really more a method of approaching things. Our lack of concern with style can become a style in itself.
Well, when people are playing, I don't think they think in terms of a, an approach or a style. They just um, have got nothing else to do down here, so they just plug in and, and make a noise. I think it's always ironic that, that the audience are four or five years behind the bands and when you have, say, Jesus and Mary Chain came through this year and drew a huge crowd and people loved them and yet they were playing music that the Flying Nun bands were playing five years ago to very, very small crowds. Um, Jesus and Mary Chain are really good but I don't think they're two-thirds as good as the Clean and all the straight jacket fits who supported them when they came through Dunedin. Live music will never be dead in Dunedin. Lots of venues, lots of bands is limitless, really. The collective and informal nature of the city's music scene could be one of the reasons why Dunedin has become such a fertile source of music. That is gonna have a good time. It's gonna have a good time. The people involved in music in Dunedin are, on the whole, really good people, good people to work with. They're good to each other, a lot of support. One of the major exports for which Dunedin was getting known for overseas was its music. And for those who wish to explore the sounds of the South further, uh, there are two cassette labels with a variety of adventurous or underground music available. Christchurch's Failsafe at Box 3003 Christchurch or Dunedin's Expressway, who are now also releasing product on vinyl. You know, their first record being a Dead Sea a seven inch EP. And I must mention this excellent publication, Alley Oop, that you can pick up at some record stores. It contains, as it says, uh, news and views from the